Hello, welcome to Basics of Noise and its Measurement. This is the last week of uh, this particular MOOC course and I hope that you have had a good time and uh, time over which uh, you have acquired some expertise and knowledge about uh, noise, sound, some of the fundamentals associated with acoustics and also some of the details as they relate to the technology of noise uh, related measurements. Uh, this week uh, what we are going to do is cover a couple of different topics and we will start by continuing the discussion which we had in the last week. The last week and the week before that we were discussing about uh, Fourier transforms and their applications. And this week at least in first two, three lectures what we are going to cover is uh, some of uh, the techniques related to uh, Fourier transforms uh, and uh, they may, they are known as uh, short time uh, Fourier transforms or short time uh, digital Fourier transforms and also spectrograms. So that is what we are going to start this week with. So this is short time DFT and in this context, so the topic we are going to cover is short time Fourier transforms. Okay. And because we are going to use uh, uh, you know discrete form of this Fourier transform. So, we, so this is STFT. So, what we will actually discuss is short time discrete Fourier transform. So, that is what we are going to discuss. And before we start discussing uh, this particular method, uh, just wanted to give you some background as to why uh, there is a need for this kind of a uh, method. So, the Fourier transform uh, that is uh, FT or its discrete version DFT, they do pretty good job if the signal is stationary. Okay. So, they do a good job if the signal is stationary. So, you may wonder what is uh, a stationary signal. So, I will give you an example of a stationary signal y equals a sin 2 pi f t plus phi. This is a stationary signal. Why is it stationary? If I plot it, there is a phase, but this signal keeps on going forever and the nature of this signal, the fundamental nature of this signal, it does not change over time. So, it is a stationary signal. Another example, y is equal to a 1 sin 2 pi f t plus phi 1. So, this is first frequency plus a 2 cosine 2 pi f 2 t plus phi 2. This is also a stationary signal because both these components of this signal y, they are not changing over a period of time. The nature of these the signal the value of the signal of course, it changes from time to time, but the nature of the signal it does not change from time to time. So, as time changes the nature of this signal does not change. To make it more explicit <coughs> if I plot, so this is my frequency axis and this is my magnitude. If I do a Fourier transform of this signal, okay. what is the amplitude of this or the magnitude uh, amplitude is A. So, if 
this is f 1 and let us say this frequency is f 1 t then on the Fourier the Fourier transform of it it will depict it as one single point and this value will be a and the value of a or this graph is not going to change maybe if I compute the value of this Fourier transform so from 0 to 5 second I will get this from 5 to 10 seconds I will again get this and so on and so forth. So, this figure does not change with time does not change with time the same thing is true of the other signal. So, here I have <coughs> a 1 and a 2 these are the two Fourier components. So, if I plot them on the same graph so, a 1 may be some other number a 1 and this may be a 2 corresponding to frequencies f 1 and f, f 1 and f 2 ok. So, this one was a 1 and no excuse me this was a this is some other number a 2 and this is some other number a 1. Okay. So, that is the property of a stationary signal that it is nature in the it does not change over a period of time I do not it does not happen that maybe in the first 5 seconds I am only having some number of frequencies and after 10 seconds some new frequencies start coming up. And also the magnitudes of the individual frequencies and the phase they also do not change with time. So, again if it is Fourier uh, uh, on the frequency representation of the signal it does not evolve over a period of time. But then there are non stationary signals ok. Here if I take the FFT of the signal over first 5 seconds I will get one picture then maybe from 5 seconds to 10 seconds I will get another picture then from 10 seconds to 15 seconds I will get a third graph and all these graphs need not be identical if they are identical it will be a stationary signal. So, these are so we are talking about stationary signals examples of stationary signals which we occur, see in day to day life speech it is a non stationary signal right I am talking. So, when I am talking every word or every letter it comes in a different sequence you know it comes in a different sequence I T C O M E S. So, the predictability of this sequence is difficult. So, it comes in a different sequence music most of the music unless it is all repetitive music and most of the music is uh, can be depicted as non stationary signals. Another example if I have a car and it is accelerating it is accelerating. So, what happens you will hear initial frequencies may be at of lesser values, but as the car speeds up zoom, zzz, so the frequencies go up with time it is only when the car assumes a uh, constant velocity then the signal the sound signal emitted by the car becomes stationary otherwise as it is accelerating it is generating a noise signal which is non stationary in, in nature. So, an accelerating car or a decelerating car it is also a non stationary signal when a train starts moving the sound is non stationary when a plan plane lands or takes off it is non stationary only once the operation becomes steady then things start behaving uh, producing stationary signals. So, a lot of signals which we encounter in our practical lives they may be non stationary in nature and then the question is that how do I get their frequency content we have to be careful that when I ask this question about the <coughs> frequency content we have to be cognizant that this frequency content will change over a period of time 
and our regular Fourier transform it just gives us one single picture okay. So, it does not tell us how the thing is evolving over time. So, to address that problem we have this tool which is basically a modified version of Fourier transform and it is called short time FT and so this is uh, in the analog world uh, but if I want to uh, do the same thing for discrete points. So, this is for continuous function if I want to do it for discrete points then it is short time ST DFT short time discrete Fourier transform okay. So, what do we do in this short time uh, Fourier transform? So, suppose I have a So, on the x axis I have time on the y axis I have pressure as a function of time and I want to do I want to see how its frequency content and each frequency amplitudes they change with time. So, suppose my signal is something like this. So, there is no predictability in it right <laughs> there is no predictability it is a non stationary signal. <coughs> this is a non stationary signal. So, the way I do it is that I, I will say ok what I will do is so this is the first level of analysis and then we will refine our approach as we move further. So, our first level is that I will break this into windows. So, I will I will break my signal into a window of this size. So, let us say this is my T 1 seconds long and my next window will be again t 1 seconds long. So, I break it up in in this next window. So, again I mean this red box should be large enough so that it covers this green part here also ok. Then I make my third box again t 1 seconds long. So, this is so t 1 equals t 2 equals t 3 these boxes are of equal time intervals. So, I break my signal into several boxes ok and then for each box for each box or window I conduct the Fourier transform. So, I conduct my FFT or DFT. So, what I get is I get the first FFT plot will be for this box I will call it F 51. The second F 50 plot will be for this box I will call it F 52. The third F 50 plot will be for this box I will get F 53 and so on and so forth. So, then what I have done is I have broken my entire signal into small portions spanning over a short time that is why we call it short time digital uh, discrete Fourier transform spanning over a short period of time and then for that short period of time I do a, a FFT and I get a plot for amplitude and plot for phase. So, then I have some information about each time segment ok. So, that is the basic concept that you break the entire signal into this uh, small chunks and then for each chunk you conduct for a fast Fourier transform from that you extract information about so each frequency. So, the point is that if my so, so now here is the issue. So, if size of window is very large if the size of suppose this T 1 is very long then it will not help me understand how the signal is evolving 
over time period over the time right because I have taken uh, a long duration of time. So, if the size of the window is very large then I lose time related information. right and what happens if the size is very small and if the size is a window is very small then I lose we had seen earlier that if I have very small size right which means that is the duration of uh, uh, time over which I am doing the FFT is very small. What does that mean? My frequency resolution, what was the frequency resolution? We had discussed it, it is 1 over the total duration of time, right. So, what I will get my solutions will be uh, the frequency resolution will be 1 over that duration. If that duration is very small, then maybe I will get my first point at 100 hertz, second point at 500 hertz if the duration is very small do you understand ok. So, if if duration is very small I lose info information about frequency why is that my delta f that is frequency resolution we had calculated and shown that it was nothing but 1 over time or duration right. So, if this number is very small so suppose I am my window is 10 milliseconds long suppose suppose this delta t suppose this is delta t. So, the post delta t is equal to 10 into 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds. Then my frequency points will be 1 over 10 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So, that will be 100 hertz ok. So, I will my first point will be at let us say 100 then 200 then 300. So, I will not have any information about all the intermediate frequencies ok. So, this is a trick this is a challenge that how do I manage both these contradictions. So, if my and if I if I take if I want to increase my frequency resolution if I want to increase my frequency resolution I have to make the size of the window long, but if I make the size of the window long then I lose the time information. So, this is the whole problem. Okay. So, this is like your uh, in uh, physics we have this Heisenberg's uncertainty principle right where the particles momentum and position cannot be precisely determined at the same time to infinite level of precision. So, something similar we have in this thing. So, there is a rule that delta f times delta t should be less than 1 over it should be less than 1 over 4 pi. So, <coughs> I cannot arbitrarily choose any value of delta t and delta f because if I take extremely small value of time I lose information of frequency if I choose extremely small value of large value of time then I lose information on time ok. So, there is some terminology here. So, uh, and I just want you to make uh, conversant with that terminology. So, if delta t is very small then people say that ok we get good time localization. ok because we get good information about how things are changing with respect to time, but we get poor 
frequency localization okay you get poor frequency localization on the converse if delta t is large we get good frequency localization but poor time localization so this is a problem and when we do this short time discrete fourier transform we should be aware of this problem and we should work within these boundaries i mean we will still get more information right we will still get more information from if we just did fft of the whole signal but we should be aware that whatever we are seeing may not be the exact reality because there is a limit mathematical limit which is being imposed which is and that because of that limit we are getting only limited amount of information okay the second thing is uh, so the other concept i wanted to discuss here was about sliding window sliding okay actually that improves uh, some of the stuff which we are discussing so in this picture what i had shown was that you break the entire uh, what do you say entire uh, uh, signal into chunks you know so you have chunk 1 then you have chunk 2 and this chunk 1 and chunk 2 are adjacent to each other there is no overlap of these two chunks okay so when you do uh, when you get fft1 and when you get fft2 this signal for fft1 time signal may be significantly different than signal for time signal for fft2 so you may see sudden changes in uh, frequency spectra of signal 1 and signal 2 because signals have changed significantly but in reality that may not be happening things may be evolving slowly or smoothly okay so to have to address that particular problem what you do is you do uh, this sliding of windows so what what you do there so what you do here is suppose this is your signal what you do is you you take the first window okay this is window 1 then the second window is not just adjacent to the first window rather your second window is basically your first window has moved out a little bit further okay so then you take you get a second window then you take a third window and that moves out a little further rightwards so this is your green is your this purple is your third window green is your second window and so on and so forth and in this process you get relatively smoother transitions from one window to other window okay you get relatively smoother transitions in this way so that is this whole notion of sliding okay so what i'll do is uh, so these are some of the important concepts in context of uh, short term digital fourier transform i would like to close this uh, lecture at this point of time and in the next lecture we will actually see some of the results of this short term fourier transform and if we have time we will also introduce another thing called spectrogram so that's all i wanted to discuss this today and uh, thank you very much and we will meet you tomorrow <laughs>